I'm going to be showing you how to sketch the graphs of sine, cosine, and tangent. And this will make more sense uh, later after I've shown you. I'll explain this later. So uh, first of all, let's try to do a graph of sine x. Now, if you remember this, but in degrees we can do it. Uh, the first period, at least, of sine x, it looks like this. It starts off here, it goes like this, then it goes down, it comes back up again. Something like this. Keep in mind, it keeps going. Right? It keeps going forever. I was just trying to show you the first little bit of it. So this would be the x-axis, over here would be the y, and this top part here would be 1, this bottom right here would be negative 1, and if you remember the period of a sine curve is 360 degrees, and then I always take that and then do half of that, well half of that is 360 over 2, that's 180, half of that again is 90, that's where the peak is here, there's like these five main points. One, two, three, four, five. With these five points, you can draw a sine curve. And then I need this one, of course. So what I do is I start off at zero here. I go, well, one times 90 is this, sure. Then two times 90 is that. This must be three times 90, which is 270. There we go, we've drawn it. Now let's do it in radians instead. All you have to do is remember, what is 360 degrees? Like, what's, what's the period? So 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. So this is the key aspect here. This is the key thing we need to know about. It's the period of sine x is 2 pi. And by the way, on the next page, I'm going to be showing you the period of cosine is also 2 pi. Okay, so we're going to get to that one later as well. But what's interesting is I'm going to show you tangent. Whoops, I'm going to show you a graph of tangent here. And that one, the period is just going to be just pi. So just so you know, we're going to have some different uh, things here, but sine and cosine both have a period of 2 pi. All right, let's actually draw this then. So what I like to do is instead of putting the numbers, I always like to just draw my graph first of sine, then I make the numbers fit. I find that's a lot easier for me, whatever works for you. But remember, sine starts off at the middle here, that's 0, 0, unless it's been transformed, which we'll talk about later. So um, I need to make it do something like this. So I'll just make it go arbitrarily up and then down, and then back up again. And of course, I'll have it keep going, like this, and down, right? And what do I do here? Well, I make sure this is labeled the x-axis, this is the y-axis, this is one, this is negative one. So far, it's the same as the degrees. The difference is this value right here is two pi radians. If that's two pi, I split it in two, that must be pi. I take that, I split it in two again, that must be pi over 2. Then I start counting by these units. 1 pi over 2, this must be 2 pi over 2, therefore this must be 3 pi over 2. That's how I get my five main points. 3, 4, 5 of them. Keep going, of course, you can just keep adding, right? Keep adding. But this is just showing at least how to sketch sine x. This is the graph of sine. Now, why is it this then? Hey, girl, what's your sign? I mean, it's a little bit sexist, but bear with me here. Look, it must be pi over 2 because you are the 1. Let's see why. If we do the sine, when x is pi over 2, look at the value. It's 1. Uh -huh, uh -huh, like that. <laughs> That's actually brilliant. Oh, it's Sheldon from uh, Big Bang Theory, if you ever watched that old show. Anywho, let's go to the next one. So now we got cos. Cosine looks just like sine, except it's been shifted over. So it has the same kind of shape, except instead of starting it here at 0, 0, it starts off at 1. Fine, I'm going to make it go like this, then down, and then up. Do you notice I just sort of arbitrarily draw it? And then, of course, I'll have it keep going. Do, 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 something like this. I'm not perfect at drawing these. It's a sketch, after all. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so I'll label my x, my y axes. See, I do that after I'm done drawing it, so I know where to put them. What's the period of a cosine? Same thing. So it's... 2 pi. So this value right here must be 2 pi here, this top value right here. Well, we got to figure out that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. So let's see what happens here. So if this is 2 pi, half of that must be right here, and that is pi. And half of that must be pi over 2. And then again, I count 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, this must be 3 pi over 2. And I'm done sketching. Now, why would we want to use this? Well, later on we have, um, we have, uh, whoops, that's not negative one, it's plus one. 
We have examples where we need to do transformations of these, that's true. But another thing, it's just useful to know the sketches of them because uh, you, can, you can use them to get the values. Remember before I was showing you how to use the unit circle? So let's look at this. If I want to do cosine of 3 pi over 2, I could use the unit circle. So to do that, remember how I could draw that. I could just draw myself, well, my unit circle. I need to know what a uh, um, what an angle that finishes at 3 pi over 2 is. So let's think. Now I start off at 0 here. Start off this. Remember, I always rotate around here. This is 1 pi over 2. So over here must be 2 pi over 2. This down here then must be 3 pi over 2. Okay, so since it finishes straight down, cosine is the x value. So that must be 0 here. So I would say that the answer should probably be 0. And the sine, just to show how I would do it, I would use the same diagram, in fact. But the sine is the y value. It says it's down here. It's minus 1. Remember that from the other video I showed you. Okay, So this value right here, because the sine is the y value. That's one way of doing it. If you use a unit circle, the x's are the cos, the y's are the sines. That's if you use unit circle and you're rotating around it. However, if you want to do it by doing a graph, you could do it this way. I just want to show you how you could actually sketch it. So if I want a graph of cos, how does that look again? It starts off here and it goes down and back up again. This is the first, at least the first period of it. This is x, this is y. This is 1, this is negative 1. This is 2 pi, so this must be half of that, which is pi, half of that, which is pi over 2 and 1, 2, 3 pi over 2. Okay, so if we want to know what's the cosine of 3 pi over 2, and we're looking at an actual graph, not the unit circle, then we don't say that the x is the cos and the y is the sine. That, it, that no longer holds true. This then, this, the y value is the, the value we're looking for. So we set when x, I'll write it like this, we set when x equals 3 pi over 2, what happens? The y value, let's see, when x is 3 pi over 2, the y value is 0, right? Therefore, the answer then is 0. So you might think, no, no, we did the y value, that's supposed to be sine. That's only if you do unit circles. If you're doing regular graphs, the y value is always sort of what you're looking for if you're doing a graph here. So the, this is the x, and the answer will be the y value. So then, hey, look, they match at least. If that got confusing, let's try this one here. So let's do a graph of sine. So I would just, whoa, that was a very bad straight line. There we go. Let's try to do a one period of sine. So sine starts off here, goes up and down and back up again. And remember, uh, this value right here is 1, and this value here is negative 1. This is 2 pi. That must be half of that, which is pi, half of that, which is pi over 2. 1, 2, 3 pi over 2. And the question was then, we want to know what's the sine of 3 pi over 2. Well, remember, though, we still are going to use this idea that this is the x value. So x is 3 pi over 2. When we do that, what's the y value? Well, when x is 3 pi over 2, let's see here. When x is 3 pi over 2, the y value is negative 1. So that's why the answer is negative 1. You see, that gave us the same answer as over here when we did the unit circle trick, where here x was cos theta and the y was sine theta. So those are two different rules, okay? If you're doing unit circle, you do that stuff. If you're doing regular graphs, X's are what you put in, Y's are your answer, whether it's cosine or sine, because here we had to do just different graphs. Just different ways of doing it. All right, let's do tan X. By the way, I like this. Life is like a sine function. It has its up and downs, because, you know, if you look at a sine curve, see, look, it's, you know, life goes up and down. And then I said, no, no, what if I take the absolute value of this? Well, that makes it go sort of up and then up again. And then they did the negative version of that, which means it flips it. So that means it actually flips it and uh, makes it go down. So ha, 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 that's a negative. That's just a bit uh, <laughs> pessimistic. So we have a graph of tan. Now what does that look like? That one is kind of all its own. It's kind of weird. So we're going to maybe define this one here. I'll call it pi over 2 here. Well, then I'll go symmetric. So I'll go minus pi over 2. That will be a good one there. And these are what we call, whoops, I'll go x's and y's here. These are asymptotes. They're vertical, whoops, I just didn't draw it very nice, but these are vertical asymptotes. There you go. And, well, let's see, there's another one. And let's see, this is uh, 1, 2 pi over 2, so it must be 3. There you go, like that. So this right here would be 3 pi 
over 2. This is 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2 must be 3 pi over 2. And if this is 1 pi over 2, this is 2 pi over 2, which rounds. It's, uh, look, 2 pi over 2. The 2's cancel out, it just becomes pi. So that's just pi. And I have another asymptote here. Now what happens with tangent is it does this. This is just something that's worth knowing. It has a point here, and it's going to have a point here, and it continues. But it basically goes like this. It goes like this, something like that. I mean, it's not perfect. That's why it's a sketch. Something like this. Okay, so this is what tan does. You notice that the distance from here to here is pi. See, that's the period. All right, that's the graph of tan. So you see, we could use the graphs in order to try to get values, although I would think it's probably easier and quicker to do it using the unit circle. But the graphs are going to be useful later on when we're doing transformations. There we go. Those are the graphs of sine, cos, and tan.